Hey guys, how's it going? This is Seth from RE Tipster. And uh, if you're looking for like low and no cost ways to find great real estate deals from highly motivated sellers, there is an ocean of opportunity at your fingertips if you know how to use the multitude of free ad posting directories out there. I'm talking about websites like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Zillow, and even some of the lesser known websites that have less traffic and sort of come and go with time, but still they offer access to deals that you're not gonna find listed on your local MLS system. So if you have the luxury of time and you can start by searching these websites for motivated sellers, there's a lot of value to be found here. And luckily, all these websites give you a lot of really helpful ways to narrow down your search. So you're really focusing in on the properties that are most likely to have some good potential for you. So I'm just gonna show you one example here. Now this is on Craigslist, a website that pretty much everybody's familiar with. It gets tons and tons of traffic. If you wanted to get started looking for deals, you could start by either clicking on this housing section here. That's gonna take you to literally everything that has to do with housing, or you could drill down even further and click on the real estate for sale button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one right here. And on this next page, you can really make use of all the nice filtering options that they make available on the site. For example, I might start by specifying a price range, the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, in locations that I consider acceptable. So this is with the assumption that I'm looking for like a single family home or a duplex or something like that. So when it comes to price, I might put something like 20,000 to 100,000. And then for bedrooms, we're gonna say two. And then bathrooms, we're gonna say at least one, obviously. And uh, already it's starting to filter out our options over here. And then for square footage, I'm going to just leave that one alone for now. Availability, I'm going to leave that as all dates. And then it does not need to be furnished. I don't care if it's smoking or no smoking, wheelchair access, that stuff doesn't matter. In this example here, I'm looking for like dirt cheap real estate that I can buy at a discount. And a lot of times when you're getting those kinds of properties, it means there's some kind of problem going on, something you need to do to step in and fix the problem or add value in some way. Then when it comes to housing type. If you know exactly what kind of property you do and do not want, you can obviously specify all that here. In my case, I might check house, flat, duplex, Probably not gonna find many cottages and cabins in the middle of Chicago, but you never know. Uh, I'm not really looking for a condo or an apartment. I know there's tons of those in Chicago, but I'm not gonna mess with that in this example. Sure, what the heck, click this, click that, and we'll just call that good for now. And then laundry, this doesn't really matter for what I'm looking for. Parking, I'm willing to accept whatever I can find, so I'm not gonna mess with that. And then we can update the search. And we still have lots of options here, 216 to look at. Now, something else we can do here is start looking specifically by keywords. And there's a lot of keywords out there that end up being baked into the property descriptions or even the titles of the property listings that end up being great deals. For example, one of those keywords commonly used is the word fixer because that's part of what goes into fixer upper. And if the property owner or the listing agent chose to put that word somewhere in their property description, that's obviously not a guarantee of anything, but there's probably a higher likelihood that you'd actually be able to get a property like this at a price that is far below market value because if they say it's a fixer upper, it's probably gonna need some work and it's gonna be less appealing to the typical retail buyer who would be willing to pay a full price. And there's actually a ton of these types of keywords that can help you zero in on the properties that appeal to investors who are looking to buy their properties at a lower price. I've actually got a list of a whopping 50 of these kinds of keywords that you can employ in this kind of search. If you wanna see all those keywords, you can check out the blog post associated with this video and I'm going to have a link to that blog post right in the description below so go ahead and click on that if you're interested but simply using these kinds of keywords are going to narrow down your list even further so that you're only seeing the ones with those keywords on them you can see right here it's gone down to 53 if we want to click on any of these a lot of these still probably aren't going to be exactly what we're looking for but when you apply all these filtering criteria and put a keyword or two or three in there that really specify what you're looking for, it can really help you weed out a lot of the junk that you're never gonna wanna look at anyway and just zero in on the properties that most likely 
fit the description of what you actually want. Now remember, if you're gonna go this route, you're gonna have to be smart about it because you can waste a ton of time just looking line by line at every single listing. And the truth is the vast majority of these listings will not be worth your while. So it's important to use this kind of search functionality to keep the fluff out of your searches and zero in on exactly what you're looking for. And if you wanna take this even further, you can actually set some automation in place by having these search results delivered right to your email inbox. So you don't even have to get in here and like keep an eye on this stuff manually every single day. All you have to do is go over here to save search and then it's gonna remember all those things you specified, which market, which housing type, the maximum and minimum price, bedrooms, bathrooms, all the stuff we just did. It's basically just going to remember that and send you alerts for this right to your inbox. If we go ahead and click on edit here, we can give this alert a name, whatever we want that to be. Like, I don't know, I might call this like Chicago Fixer or something like that. And then we also need to make sure we're clicking this email thing so that it actually does send us an email because if we don't, obviously nothing's gonna happen. So go ahead and save that. And another thing I just kind of want to point out here is that uh, you can take this even further if you go back here to the search page. And let's say there's actually several different keywords that you want to have included and or there's several keywords that you don't want to have included. It's really easy to specify all that too, just by putting a comma in here, adding all the stuff that you want to have included. And then also if there's words that you don't want to have included, you just put a minus sign and then put that word in there as well. So like luxury would be a word that I probably would not be looking for if I'm looking for great deals. Not really looking for anything with a view. Maybe take out some of these like buzzwords that uh, people like to use when they're trying to play up the value of their property. You get the idea. It's obviously up to you to specify which kinds of keywords you do or don't want to appear in your listings. But hopefully that just shows you a little further how much you can specify this. And then uh, again, once you've searched for that, it looks like that was a little too specific because now we've got absolutely nothing here. <laughs> but uh, once you've got your results dialed in to something that's actually working for you, you can go ahead and save it and uh, get alerts every time those uh, results pop up. I'll go ahead and save that search. Now we got another one. Then we can go ahead and click this, make sure that the alerts are actually on and it's labeled the way we want and you get the idea. So just to give you a quick idea what those search alerts look like when you get the email from Craigslist, it looks something like this. Basically just has the alert with that uh, label that you created in the subject line. And as you scroll down, you can see all of the main pictures. There's links to the actual listings themselves. If you wanna go check them out, you can do that. And uh, it basically, in this example anyway, it showed me the first 20 results. I think that's what it does all the time. But if you wanna see the rest, you can click view all the results. If you wanna unsubscribe, you can do that pretty easily. It's pretty straightforward. And in terms of how frequently these email alerts get sent out. So this is the frequently asked questions about saved searches and alerts on Craigslist website and uh, when you go down here it asks you know when will my search alert email me uh, basically it doesn't answer the question all that well the next one here how are search alert emails scheduled it says based on the number of results in the last alert the fewer the results the more frequent the search so again, it doesn't exactly tell us specifically how frequently or when these emails are going to come through but again folks it's Craigslist it's free what do you expect? But uh, it does work and it will certainly save you some time versus having to manually go to the site and look for this stuff every single day. And it also should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway, in order to do all this stuff, you need to actually have a Craigslist account. So if you don't have one yet, it's really easy to sign up. Again, it's free, not hard to do. But uh, be sure to do that as well so you can uh, get moving on this. So some other just quick tips if you are going to use Craigslist to try to find deals like this. If you're going to search for deals on sites like Craigslist, make sure you're doing it daily and like actually stay on top of your leads and the alerts that get sent through. These listings are a moving target with new opportunities showing up each day that weren't there before. So you really need to pay attention or you're definitely gonna miss things. And also try to develop a system, even if it's just like a spreadsheet or a pretty basic CRM system, just to keep track of which listings you've already contacted and which ones on your list you still wanna reach out to. And also follow up after your initial contact. A lot of sellers are gonna ignore or overlook the first contact that comes in, whether it's by phone or email. But when it comes in again, 
it becomes much harder to miss. So just remember, there's a lot of success in simply following up after the first contact. So if you want to see the full blog post associated with this video, you can click on the link in the description below. It'll take you right there and you can see a lot more details about what we've covered here and a lot of other stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll talk to you again in the next video.